Welcome back to Uflix. Today's recap is about a 1991 American coming-of-age hood drama film called Boys in the Hood. The story follows the lives of three young males living in the Crenshaw ghetto of Los Angeles with three different goals in life. Try to survive in a neighborhood which is the environment to shatter dreams, not encourage it. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The story opens in 1984, where Trey Styles is a young African-American child who attends school with some of his buddies. Trey Styles lives with his mother in a difficult area of Los Angeles. One of his buddies wants to know as to whether his family heard about a shooting that happened the night before. Then, in front of a ruined garage, the kid extends an invitation for them to see the crime site. There are several gunshot holes in the garage door, and there is a lot of blood on the ground. The children attend school and sit in class as their instructor discusses the pilgrims and Thanksgiving with the students. Trey mocks the lesson, and the instructor calls him up to address the group. Trey agrees arrogantly and proceeds to speak about the continent of Africa, displaying amazing knowledge of the topic. When he proposes that all of the world's races originated in Africa, one of the other pupils laughs. Trey hits the kid with a pointer he's been using, and the two fight in class. Trey has been sent home. As he returns home, his mother Reva, his mother Reva speaks with his teacher who says Trey is brilliant and has a large vocabulary, but he can't seem to manage his temper. Reva then informs the teacher that Trey will not be returning to school since he'll be living with his father furious. Reva transports Trey to his father's home. On the journey, she informs Trey that she doesn't want him to end up destitute, illiterate, and homeless for the rest of his life. Later, Trey and Furious go through the house rules, and Furious informs Trey that he isn't being as harsh on him as Trey perceives. He claims I'm attempting to teach him responsibility. A burglar breaks into Furious' residence that night. Trey's father draws his Colt Python and leaps from his bedroom, firing two fast bullets. They leave large breaches in his front door, and the burglar flees, leaving a shoe behind. Trey goes to Doughboy's place the next day. Doughboy appears and awaits Ricky along with Trey, who is carrying a football. Later, Chris joins them and asks if they want to see a dead corpse. They approach the corpse and stare at it as a gang of tough-looking adolescents approaches. They're looking for Ricky's football. Ricky hands it to them, and it's evident that the boys will retain it. Doughboy approaches one of the lads and asks the ball be returned. When he attempts and fails to steal it, he kicks the bigger boy in the leg. Doughboy is backhanded and kicked by the boy. When Ricky returns his gaze to the teens, one of them relents and returns the ball to Ricky. Furious asks his son if he's a leader or a follower at the beach. Trey proudly proclaims himself to be a leader. Furious also questions Trey about his knowledge about sex. Trey explains, I take a female, insert my thing in her, and nine months later, a baby is born. Furious responds, Remember this, anyone with a dick may have a baby, but only a true man can nurture his children. He also shares his feelings of discrimination when he entered the army. He tells him not to consider joining the army. When they go home, they discover a police cruiser parked in front of Doughboy's house. Doe and Chris have been detained on suspicion of shoplifting. A party is being thrown at Ricky and Doe's house seven years later. The Doe was recently freed from prison. Ricky attends the celebration as well, and we see that he's now a father with a newborn kid. Trey shows up to the party and meets Doe. The Doe is playing dominoes with Chris, who is now in a wheelchair and Monster, another member of his tiny gang. Trey advises that when the food is served, the men at the gathering wait for the women to finish their meals first. Trey returns home, carrying a tray of food for his father. Trey shows his father the plate he brought home, however, he requests that Furious cut his hair. While doing so, Trey amusingly informs his father that he's growing older. Furious, who's also amused, reminds Trey that he's just 17 years his junior. Trey makes a light-hearted remark about his future children, pestering their granddad for money. Furious got angry and asks Trey if he's defending himself as a sexually active person. Trey tells his father a made-up story about having sex with a teen girl. Furious taunts him for not wearing protection. Trey picks up Ricky and drives him to school the next morning. Trey discusses his talk with his father and discloses that he's a virgin. Ricky chuckles at first but quickly apologizes. Ricky goes to football practice after school while Trey chats to Brandy. She still refuses to sleep with him since she's Catholic. Trey makes various reasons, but Brandy isn't moved. The two, however, reconcile quickly. That night, when Doughboy and his buddies are hanging out on his front porch, a USC admissions official chats with Ricky about attending the famous institution of a football scholarship. The representative recommends that Ricky's primary objective for college should not be football. He should also look into other academic fields such as business or computer technology. He then wants Ricky to take that SAT in order to be eligible for the scholarship. 
Brenda expresses her admiration for him once the representative has left. Ricky and Trey take the SAT exam for a few days later. They then proceed to Furious' office. Furious has started his own company where he helps customers locate low-cost home loans. He brings them to a difficult area of Compton. Furious informs the lads about the gentrification process, which involves lowering the property value of rundown districts in order to force away poor inhabitants and then boosting the property value in order to attract new, higher-income residents. Furious goes on to discuss how difficult communities like this have more booze and gun outlets than non-black neighborhoods. As he speaks, many young hustlers from the neighborhood approach to listen. According to Furious, establishments like those provide things that incite impoverished people to commit suicide, either slowly in the case of alcohol or quickly such as from murders. When an elderly guy enters the group, he says that the young people are the source of all the turmoil since they don't work and just do illegal activities, along with harming each other on the streets. Furious responds, claiming that black people do not source the narcotics that get up on the streets. When someone approaches him in a rage with a gun, one of the young guys on the street claims he has no option but to murder him before he's killed himself. Furious advises him to consider before shooting. Trey and Ricky are driving back home when Trey suggests they meet up with Doughboy and his pals on Crenshaw Boulevard. A tall gang member purposefully shoulders Rick violently while they chat to Doe. Rick becomes enraged and begins yelling at him. Doe gets out of his car and displays the weapon hidden in his belt. A blast of automatic gunfire is heard moments later and everyone scatters. On his way back to his car, the hood fired a Mac-10 submachine pistol in the air. Trey and Rick were shortly pulled over by officers, one of whom had attended to his father's call years previously when their house had been broken into. The officer does not identify Trey but suspects he's a gang member. The officer draws his gun on Trey and he threatens to kill him. When another report for a probable killing comes in, the officer lets Trey and Ricky depart. Trey walks to Brandy's residence and bursts into tears. She consoles him and the two retire to bed together. Ricky is watching television the next morning. When an advertisement for the United States Army comes on, he begins to believe that military would be the answer to his financial problems about attending USC. His girlfriend requests that he go to the shop and purchase some cornmeal. On the walk out the door, his brother criticizes him for becoming tamed by his lover. This leads them to start fighting on the front yard. Their mother appears and breaks up the fight by hitting Doe across the face. Trey and Ricky head to a convenience shop nearby. Ricky expresses his desire to join the army. Trey, on the other hand, attempts to persuade him out of it, noting his father's service. On their way back from the supermarket, they saw the automobile of the gang banger who began a fight with Rick the night before. When the automobile starts after them, they flee through an alley, sliding into a few backyards to elude the pursuers. Doe notices the gang banger's vehicle ripping around their neighborhood and knows they're after Rick and Trey. He hops in his car with some companions and drives off to find him. Ricky considers splitting up with Trey and meeting back at home as they engage from another alley. Ricky is quietly going down the street, scratching a few lottery tickets he'd purchased. Trey notices the gang banger's car approaching Rick and shouts for him to flee. One of the gang members shoots Rick twice from the backseat of the automobile. Rick gets injured in the thigh by one shot and his lower chest by the other. He collapses to the ground as Trey rushes over to him and grabs him. Two boy and the others take Ricky back to his house because they're too late to do anything else. Rick's fiance and their mother both scream and lament over his lifeless body. Monster, Dookie, and Doughboy want to get revenge for Ricky's demise. Trey returns home and grabs Furious' gun, but is stopped by his father before leaving. Furious persuades Trey not to take up the rifle and seek vengeance. Trey, on the other hand, has leaped out his window and joined Doughboy and his comrades on a vengeance quest. Trey realizes his father was accurate halfway through the journey, asks Doughboy to pull over and returns home. Ricky's killers are ultimately apprehended by Doughboy and his two companions of a neighborhood food shop. Monster has an AK-47 and Doe pounces on the bangers who flee across a parking lot. Monster fires and strikes all three of them, knocking them to the ground. Doe pulls over and approaches the bangers. One is already dead and another who tries to flee is shot dead by Doe. Doe approaches their commander, the one who instigated the fight with Ricky, and demands that he roll over and face him. The last banger screams that he wasn't the one who shot the fire. Doe shoots him again before fleeing to his car. The film ends the following morning with a conversation between Trey and Doughboy. Doughboy comprehends Trey's decision to abandon the vengeance mission and together they mourn the conditions in South Central and wonder whether they're caught in a never-ending cycle of bloodshed. 
The closing credits show that Duboy was killed two weeks later and that Trey continued on to attend college in Atlanta with Brandy. And that's all about this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to stay up to date with such interesting movie recap videos here.